Hello, I'm Dr. Sarah South, a medical director at ARUP Laboratories overseeing the Genomic Microarray, Cytogenetic, and Fish Laboratories. I'm also an associate professor in the departments of pathology and pediatrics. I'd like to talk to you today about cytogenetic testing considerations for myeloproliferative neoplasms. They are clonal hematologic malignancies characterized by proliferation in the bone marrow of cells from the myeloid lineage. This results in increased numbers of mature erythrocytes, granulocytes, and platelets in the peripheral blood and is distinctive from myelodysplastic syndromes and acute myeloid leukemia. Recently, it has been recognized that acquired mutations or rearrangements in genes encoding tyrosine kinases are critical events in the pathogenesis of some myeloproliferative neoplasms. This began with the recognition of bcr able positive chronic myelogenous leukemia, which results in an activation of the tyrosine kinase ABLE. In 2008, the World Health Organization reclassified myeloid neoplasms with associated eosinophilia and abnormalities of PDGFR alpha, PDGFR beta, and FGFR1 as distinct entities, as these rearrangements also result in activated tyrosine kinases. In the classic bcr able negative myeloproliferative disorders that include polycythemia vera, chronic idiopathic myelofibrosis, and essential thrombocytothemia, cytogenetic abnormalities are reported in only a minor fraction of these cases. Most of them are recurrent changes observed in myeloid disorders and are not specific for any particular myeloproliferative neoplasm. Although karyotypic abnormalities are identified in only a minority of these cases, a cytogenetic investigation remains important. First, it can confirm that a clonal disease is present. Second, it can exclude important rearrangements, such as a bcr able fusion due to a translocation 922. Finally, it may be needed in the follow-up of patients as leukemic evolution is often associated with progression towards more complex cytogenetic abnormalities. It is important to recognize that a cytogenetic analysis will not identify some of the recurrent genetic changes identified in myeloproliferative neoplasms, such as JAK2 mutations, a PDGFR alpha rearrangement due to a small deletion, or a cryptic bcr able fusion that does occur in approximately 5% of chronic myelogenous leukemia. Therefore, it is recommended that molecular testing is also pursued to look for these important genetic alterations. The recognition of rearrangements or mutations that result in activated tyrosine kinases, such as those associated with PDGFR alpha, PDGFR beta, FGFR1, and BCR able, are important as it has therapeutic implications. A PDGFR alpha FIP1L1 fusion, due to a cytogenetically cryptic deletion on 4Q, can be easily identified by FISH and is found in 40 to 60 percent of patients with chronic eosinophilic leukemia. The major interest in finding this genetic anomaly is the expected response to tyrosine kinase inhibitors. A fraction of cases with chronic eosinophilic leukemia may also have a PDGFR rearrangement with an alternative partner, which will also be detected by the FISH and is also likely to respond to tyrosine kinase inhibitor treatment. In the case of PDGFR beta-related myeloproliferative neoplasms, the clinical features may be more variable but are often those of chronic myelomonocytic leukemia with eosinophilia. Many different partners for PDGFR beta rearrangements have been identified, with the most common partner being ETV6. Many of these PDGFR beta rearrangements may be detected by a cytogenetic analysis, however, some may be difficult to detect, and fish with the PDGFR beta break apart probe may be considered. PDGFR beta rearrangement cases are also expected to be responsive to tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Hematologic malignancies with an FGFR1 rearrangement are even more heterogeneous and can present as a myeloproliferative neoplasm or in transformation to acute myelogenous leukemia or as T or B lineage lymphoblastic lymphoma or a mixed phenotype acute leukemia. Multiple partners for FGFR1 rearrangements have been identified Many are also cytogenetically evident. FISH is also available to confirm FGFR1 involvement with the breakpoint of a cytogenetic abnormality at 8P11 or 8P12. At this stage, it is not entirely clear that tyrosine kinase inhibitors will be effective therapy for myeloproliferative neoplasms with FGFR1 rearrangements. As these are a rare genetic anomaly, additional cases are likely needed for evaluation. 
For more information, please review our references on our educational website.